Hi there, it's Florence here and this is just going to be a short video to accompany the pattern that I'm releasing for this cardigan that I'm wearing right now. This is a Rinse and Wrap cardigan, I will link it on Ravelry in the description in case you'd like to make one for yourself. This cardigan features a double knitted edge all the way around the neck. And because it's a little bit of a tricky technique to describe in the pattern, I am putting together this video to show you how to do it. This one is quite dark in colour and very fluffy, so I've gone ahead and I've knitted up a little swatch in a lighter colour. It kind of resembles the cardigan here, I guess, a little bit. But hopefully this will allow you to see the stitches a little bit more clearly. And I'm just going to put a double knitted edge on here so that you know how to apply that to create this double knitted edge on the final cardigan. Okay, so I have gone ahead and picked up stitches along the edge of my swatch using, um, this is a smaller needle than I use to knit the fabric. If you're following a pattern, it will probably tell you which needle size you want to use to do the double knitted edge. If, for example, you've picked up one stitch for every row, then you need the row gauge of the double knitting to be the same as the row gauge of the stockinette fabric here to stop it from pulling or distorting the front of the cardigan or whatever else you're attaching the double knitted edge to. So you can follow the needle size and uh, stitch picking up frequency given in the pattern, or if you don't have that, if you're adding a button band onto something else that doesn't have one given in the pattern, or if you're making your own pattern, you may want to do a couple of swatches first to figure out what size needle will give you the row gauge that doesn't cause any distortion or weirdness on the front of your cardigan. Anyway, once you've picked up the stitches, and I'm assuming you probably know how to do this, or if you don't know how to do this, you can find other videos easily showing you how to pick up stitches. The next thing you want to do is cut the yarn because we're going to be working from the other end. Um, you want to leave a tail that's long enough to weave in. This is a bit on the short side, but it should be okay. And then you just want to slide all of your knitting along to the other end of the needles because we're going to start here. So now the next thing you want to do is cast on some new stitches here. These stitches will form the bottom edge of the double knitted uh, strip. So you can cast on in any way that you want, but to get the most sort of seamless finish where it looks like the double knitting just wraps around and continues on the back with a really invisible cast on edge, what I would recommend is an Italian cast on, which is what I'm going to show now. I'm going to cast on 11 stitches, but you want to cast on twice as many stitches as you want in the width of the button band, since half of them will make the back side and half of them will make the front side. So I've got my work with the wrong side facing and we're going to cast some new stitches on here. The first thing you want to do is loop the yarn around the needle like so. So this end is a loose end and then this end is attached to the ball of yarn. And you just want to wrap it like so. This is the first stitch we've cast on. It does count as the first one. You want to hold the yarn between your middle and ring fingers like so and then insert your finger and thumb between the two strands and open them up. This is similar to if you're doing a long tail cast on. So now we want to alternate casting on stitches that will form the front of the button band and stitches that will form the back of the button band and they are cast on differently. So here's how we're going to do it. For the first stitch, you want to bring your needle around and pick up the front strand from the bottom. Then go over this strand. Like so. I'll do that again. So you want to go around the front and under the strand over your thumb, over and around the back of this one, and then just pull that out. And that's the second stitch cast on. So now for the next stitch, you want to go under both of the strands from back to front, pick up the bottom strand, and that's it. That's how the stitch is cast on. So now we're going to repeat the first cast on again. So we're going to go under and over, and then for the second one, we're going to go under both, pick up the bottom strand. So again, for this one, we're going to go under the bottom strand and over the top strand, uh, under both and pick up the bottom strand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, let's keep on going. Under and over, under both, pick up the bottom strand. Under and over, under both and pick up the bottom strand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. That's the number of stitches I want. Okay, so turn your work again so that the right side is facing you. Now, as you can see, this is sort of unsecured, this last stitch. 
So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take the loose end here and I'm going to bring it over the top and just hold it out of the way to make sure that this stitch doesn't come undone because we're going to be knitting into it. So now we're going to work the double knitting. And basically the way the double knitting works is going to alternate knitting a stitch and then slipping a stitch purlwise with the yarn in front because we're going to knit that stitch on our way back as the back side of the double knitting. It's very confusing to explain, but just watch what I do. So I'm going to knit one, slip on with yarn in front, 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 knit one, slip on with yarn in front. That's 10 stitches. And then for the 11th stitch, in order to attach this double knitting to the edge of the fabric we've already knitted, you're going to do a knit two together through the back loop. So you're going to be knitting together the last stitch of the double knitting with the next stitch that you've picked up along the edge of the original fabric. So now we turn our work and we're gonna start with the slip one with yarn in front. I'll just pull this because this is where I picked up the stitches so it's a loose end, but it will all tighten up once I weave the ends in. So slip one with yarn in front, knit one. 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 Slip one with yarn in front for the last stitch. And that is the bottom edge of our double knitting. So basically, you just want to repeat doing that. So I'll do it once more to show you. Um, we're just going to keep on repeating those two rows. So knit one, slip on with yarn in front, 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 and then that's the 10th stitches. So for the 11th, we're going to knit two together through the back loop so that we're knitting together the last stitch of the double knitted button band with the next stitch that we picked up along the edge of the knitted fabric. So that's the knit two together through the back loop. And now we go back the other way. So this time it starts with a slip one with yarn in front. Knit one, slip one with yarn in front, and so on all the way to the end. And we're just going to repeat those two rows. I'll come back in a little bit when I have repeated that a bunch of times and you can start seeing the double knitted edge come together. So I have continued working those pairs of rows until I have just 11 stitches left on my needle. So I've already incorporated in all of the stitches that I picked up along this edge and all I have left is the 11 stitches that I have been working as the double knitted button band or edge or whatever. Now again, there are a lot of different ways that you can finish off and bind off double knitting. Um, this is the one that I'm going to do just because I think it's the most seamless looking. Basically, the first thing you want to do is you want to transfer these stitches onto two needles alternating. So you put the first stitch on the first needle, the second stitch on the second needle. The easiest way to do this probably is if you have two more sort of circular needles or DPNs or whatever, you can just sort of slip them alternating, like you slip one onto the first needle and slip one onto the other needle and so on. Um, I don't have <laughs> spares, so my game plan is to rip this needle out and then use these two ends of this one circular needle. I can just do this without dropping any stitches. That's one side. And that's the other side. And so essentially with the double knitting, we've just knitted a sort of tube and these are the two faces of this tube. So I am just going to kitchen a stitch these together just like you would to close the toe of a sock. So I'm going to cut, but leave a good length end for sewing these stitches together and thread it onto a needle. Now you'll notice I have one more stitch on one side than on the other side. It's not a problem, I'll just start off by sort of binding off a stitch on this side and I'll also finish, you'll see. So I'm just going to begin my Kitchener stitch by going purl wise through the stitch on the front needle and then knit wise off the stitch on the back needle. And then this is the sort of repeat if you're doing a Kitchener stitch. Knit wise through the stitch on the front needle and let it slip off. 
then purlwise through the next stitch on the front needle, then purlwise through the first stitch on the back needle and let it slip off, and then knitwise through the next stitch on the back needle. So I'm just going to repeat that, knitwise through this one, and then purlwise through the next stitch without letting it slip off, purlwise through the first stitch on the back needle and let it slip off. And I'm just going to try and sort of get this edge arranged so it's not tangling, knitwise through the second stitch. I only have one stitch left on each needle and the next thing I would do normally is I would go purlwise through this stitch and slip it off. And then I would go knitwise through the next stitch on this needle but there isn't one so I'm just going to sort of go through some stitch down there. <laughs> I'm not going to worry too much about which one. And then finally go knitwise through this last stitch and remove the needle. And just like that I have my double knitted edge. It looks really nice. As you can see, it's sort of double thickness, so it gives a really chunky, nice looking finished edge. It's seamless on all sides, so you can see the stockinette wraps around here. The kitchener stitch, which may not be the neatest, uh, <laughs> means that it goes seamlessly around here, and that Italian cast on means that it goes seamlessly around here as well. It does have a little bit of a tendency to flare out at the ends, so I would say make sure that you cast on and bind off quite tightly. And it also doesn't roll at all, so it works really well as an edge for stockinette. It gives a really professional looking finish. So yes, you can now weave in your ends, wash and block like you usually would, and I hope you found this helpful.